look at reconstructions or fully restored editions of film. One of the most infamous films to ever be reconstructed and restored to near most the full degree is of course Metropolis. This silent science fiction film was released in 1927 and over the years many different versions have been released but in 2010 the fully restored and reconstructed version was open for people to buy. Of course, there's still some footage missing. It could be in a private collection or it could have been destroyed. Nevertheless, Metropolis is yours to see in all its glory. It took two years for this masterpiece to be brought together how it was originally intended to be seen. Two years, 45 minutes were found and painstaking editing was done to bring this first feature-length science fiction film together. Yeah, it took that long. That's why it's taken me a while to... I mean, how does one review Metropolis? This version. Like... Metropolis, as you know, is the name of Superman's home. He wouldn't have a home if it weren't for this. And the robot. That was the influence for C-3PO. Think of it. A groundbreaking film, Star Wars, a groundbreaking comic book series, Superman, were influenced by Metropolis. Now... A few years ago, like many, I think it was 1997, there was talk of a remake. No way. There is no way anyone could do this. Maybe Christopher Nolan. Maybe James Cameron. Spielberg. I mean, he did take on the Stanley Kubrick project. George Miller. Yes. Peter Jackson. But they'd be sp smart enough not to remake this. Uh, this is a gem. It's... I'm having trouble thinking of what to say. Like... Yeah, there's shorter versions of this, but... This is the proper edition. Like, when this was released in the year 1927, it, it blew... People away for the time. Like it, even today, this blows people away. How was it done? There's so many big, intimidating sets. There's miniatures. I mean, even that costume and all these effects. Like, so what is Metropolis? It's this big futuristic city, and then you got all these people underground making it work. Then like corporate. Tycoons, like billionaires of the time, you know, and love affairs and people going crazy and a cult brewing, a revolution, a rebellion, an uprising. All because of the city and that robot. It's just insane. And to see it fully restored with new title cards, the original music. Like, you know which scenes were deleted because they scratchy and all that and they got them to the best viewable status as... Yeah, see, you can just tell how much of a struggle it is to review this. So I'm going to go to a, something a bit more simple. Very cliched, but The Exorcist. The version you've never seen. And there's another version. Which has the complete spider walk scene. So in this version. Reagan comes down the stairs. And like coughs up the blood. But in another version. After she comes down. She 
turns back normal, she pokes her tongue out, she comes down and she kisses her mum and the assistant around the floor. And they're screaming and everything and there's some other scenes, I don't know what they are. But that version, it's like the director's cut. And the DVD Blu-ray case is green, but this is the more well-known version. And, like, films, why can't they be fully released? Like, you got all the deleted scenes, alternative endings, and beginnings. Just put everything in the one release. I mean, they released all versions of Blade Runner, and there's six of them. Now, this is a very special addition to any collector out there. It's the producer's cut of Halloween 6, aka Halloween the Curse of Michael Myers. It was called that because so much happened on the set of this. The producer wanted no gore, more psychological stuff, but uh, Mustafa Akkad's son, he wanted more gore. So you got the theatrical, which is just a standard gore-to-gore -gore slasher. This version is more psychological. It's more in line with the first one. And personally, although this version has the incest plot, which is stupid and disgusting, it's actually a better focused version. Like a better film than the theatrical. But if you love gory stuff, get the theatrical. It's got some great gore, really good effects. But if you like to think, you like the psychological uh, stamina and all that, like the original, see this one. Like, this was fully restored. Like, again, there was like 40 odd minutes cut. They released the theatrical version. It wasn't a big hit. Then there was bootleg versions of this. Then there's a fan-made version, which puts both versions in one. To make like the definitive. It cuts out the stupid things. It has it more work. And that's even better than this. But that version is illegal. There's a fan site that does full restorations of films. Any movie they have touched or you have thought of. They're available. But they're not official. But this became official. Came out in 2015. And... It's just great. It's a brilliant edition. And speaking of brilliant and editions, the ultimate edition of Terminator 2. Of course, you got the extended version with the micro trip reset thing, uh, some more dream sequences, the T1000 shutting down and glitching. And here it is. So they've re released this several times over. And, you know. There's nothing else to say about T2 than what you already know. It is one of the best sequels. It's one of the best films. Like, every other Terminator was just an imitation. They, they couldn't recapture the glory. Hopefully T6 will get close to the fun that this was, but never the greatness. So yeah, this is another almost fully restored. There's still some scenes deleted, like the alternative ending and the T-1000 in John's room. If they were all put in one, then it'd be us to live this to baby. But how it is here, it's still excellent. And in 2010, the release of this, for some reason, Disney decided to redo Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with terrible effects, cartoony comic book stuff, and the whole bam, pow. Things like in the 60s Batman series. And they re-brought it back. New merchandise and all that. It was terrible. So thankfully. When Saban. Bought Power Rangers back. They released in 2013. The original. Version. In. This sweet. More phenomenal. Collector's tent. And see right there. Bond. So, the original owners, you know, they, they sold it off, Disney took it on, then that stupid reworked version came out, and then 
we got the original version. But there's one flaw with this. Where is Tommy? Yo? There he is in the back. He's there, but where is he? On the tin. He's not there. Yeah, he was meant to be like a couple of episodes like Green with Evil 1 to 5, and that was it, but he became so popular. He became long running. So he is on the promotional material on the box, but of the cup of the DVDs, but not on the case. Not on the back. You know, I never really noticed that. But yeah, so all these things here, all these effects and that, they were in the 2010 reworked version of this show. And it just looked cheap and awful. So yeah, they fixed up the film quality and it looked nice and fresh, but all the other effects, it just looked stupid. It looked like what the seasons are today. They looked cheap. And they look rushed and desperate. But thankfully, we got the proper version. And over the years, pretty much the same version. Different look, more color, whatnot. But in time, we did get this. And it paid off. And well, the 1910 Frankenstein film was found. The full, proper, original version before the Boris Karloff version. By Thomas Edison, that was found in all its glory. So it's only a matter of time they find a copy of London After Midnight. That was thought to be lost forever, but they reconstructed that in a 45 minute set photos were used. So you can see it. It's just all photos, zooms, recreated title cards. But since they got this restored, they got that out. They found the Thomas Edison Frankenstein. I'm sure someone out there has London After Midnight, the full on film, Lon Chaney's last movie before he died, and that will come out. They, they found the Ruby Slippers, they found the Aston Martin DB5, that was stolen, and they're I iconic props of films, so you got these restored, that got restored, so... It's only a matter of time they're going to restore London After Midnight, The Lost Golden Films, a few other lost movies, and maybe one day they release films fully intact. They did it with Saw, they did it with Hostel, they did it with Rob Zombie's films. You know, they got all the deleted stuff out there for like Superman 4, and many Friday the 13th films, and plenty of others. May we see them get restored and reconstructed. And I'll scale